Welcome to another video on Vue.js 2. Now, if you watched my last video, and you maybe should to fully understand this one here, you saw that I set up a local project using Vue.js with the Vue CLI to have a workflow using Webpack to, well, be able to build bigger projects, to have a fully functional workflow, which also allows me to split up my Vue code over multiple files. You also saw that in the source folder, we get this strange .view file here. And you learned that this is basically a file handled by the view loader, by Webpack here in the end, and everything is then bundled together in one file in the end. It's a nice tool to be able to split up our code though. In this .view file, we got three different sections, the template, the script section, and the styles of generally applied to the whole app, but it can also be scoped to this file here, also of this template. And that is a convenient way to be able to split up our code over multiple files. Now in this video, I'm going to have a closer look at how we can use these files, how we can split up our application over multiple files using components. Now let's take a closer look. We already have the app.view file, and I'm first going to get rid of all the content in there, this stan standard content I had there. I'm also getting rid of the content in my data field here. I don't need the name of this um, component kind of, I don't need to name it. And I can also strip out all the styling. In the assets folder where we have this logo, I can also delete that. Now, if we have a look, this is much leaner. And next I wanna create a new component. I will do this by creating a new file and I will give this file the name of, well, of the component, the name my component shall have. That's just a naming convention, which is kind of used in the Vue.js world. So let's say here, we wanted to create a simple, a simple message component. So message.view file. And in this file, well, we need a template. Template is something you will always need. In a template, we must only have one root element. So let's name it, or let's, make it of type div. And in there, I want to simply say, this is a great message, whatever you like. So in H1 tag here, we could of course, until now also use this H1 tag as the main element here. We don't need to div as of now, since we only have one nested element. Now, this is this component, and I already had a video on components. There we created it with this view.component command, and we can still do this. However, not in this file. Instead here, in the main.js file. I first need to import my message.view file. Let me add semi semicolons because that's the style I'm using here. So I'm using or I'm importing message from message.view. Now, interesting enough, I'm not exporting anything in the message.view file. I don't have a script tag where I export anything. It will work nonetheless because Webpack or this view loader will do this behind the scenes for us. It, as I explained, transforms this template here to JavaScript code anyways, and it will export it. So I can import from this message.view file. Now with the message imported, I can simply use the view component method here again to set up a new component on my view instance and give it any selector of my choice, like message or maybe also with a unique prefix, app message, for example, to make sure I'm not interfering with any third party components I might have or native HTML elements. The second element then simply is message because this is my component. Remember before we had an object here we were, where we would configure it? Well, this object is now given to us by the view loader, you could say, by compiling this message.view file here. Now with that, I got my component registered and in the app.view file, I can therefore now use app message here, like this, like the selector because it is registered globally. Now, if I go to the terminal and run npm run dev to bring up my development server again, let's take a closer look. As you can see in the running browser window at localhost 8080, I got this is a great message using my own component, which I outsourced in the message.view file. Now let's create another component. Let's create the input.view file for the input component. There I'll create another template. And in this template, I'll again add a div, and then I wanna have an input field type text here. 
And let's also output whatever we input here below this input. Well, we can use two-way binding for this with vModel. vModel will simply bind the content we enter here to a data property. And therefore, I need to add such a data property. Therefore, I need to add a script. And here we need to export this object. And this object here is now set up like a view instance, kind of. I will show one important difference, which I already talked about though in the components video. Here, we set up data as a method and I can use ES6 syntax for that. So the alternative would be data colon function or just again the shortcut ES6 gives me, which I can use here because another nice feature of this Webpack template I'm using, it will compile ES6 code to ES5, so you can use ES6 here. Now with this setup, with this data here, I need to return an object in here, which I'll name message and it should be empty at the beginning. Now I want to bind my input here to this message property with vModel again for two-way binding, and thereafter I can output it in the paragraph below. Now I also have to register this and to register this, I could of course again add it here with view component in the main.js file to create a global component. Or if I don't know, I only am going to use it here in my message. Well, then I can just add a script tag here to export an object here to and add the components property to register some local components. Here, the keys are the selectors, for example, app input and then the other, the value would be the component itself, which I of course have to import. So import input from, and then it's from the input.view file. And I will then assign this as a value here, which enables me of course to now use app input as an element here. And if I save this and go back using the input field, and if I enter something there, you see hello. Awesome. So with that, we're using this Webpack setup, these .view files to split up our code to contain each component in its own file, which we then can import and set up globally and locally. Next, in the next video, I want to have a look at how we can use this setup to not only output the message here in the input component, but also to transfer it to our message component. Well, let's have a look at this in the next video. Bye.